folks, David here on the Vintage Future once again, and today I want to do a quick review and kind of like, I guess, initial impressions on a couple pairs of Freenote jeans. The first one is the Freenote Belford in 14.5 ounce Kaihara denim. I've had those well over a year. You might remember I did an initial impressions video on those, yeah, again, well over a year ago, and I have kept them. Uh, but I didn't wear them quite as much, actually kind of hardly at all, because I was focusing on my flatheads for the Indigo Invitational, and then now I've got my warehouse jeans that I'm focusing on. So they've taken the back burner, but I have worn them probably like 30 times, and so I've got some comments about those. And then also, more recently, I was thinking about my unbranded brand jeans that I had had, my heavyweight 21 ounce jeans, and I was like, man, It'd be really sweet to uh, have something that's closer to that heavyweight class just to put on every so often for that bulletproof feeling. Once again, have something like that in the rotation, even if I'm not going to wear it much. So I reached out to Andrew Broderick, one of the brothers that owns Freno Cloth, and uh, saw what they have and got this other uh, pair. It's a Freno Belford once again, but this time it's in the 17 ounce Yoshiwa denim. So Yoshiwa is a mill, and Kaihara is a mill. Kaihara is, if not the original reproduction shuttle loom mill in Japan, um, it's one of the first that kicked off this whole raw denim, um, what do you call it, revolution. Um, I think like in the 1960s or whatever. So Kaihara is like, if not the original, uh, one of the original that kicked this whole thing off back then. Um, and then Yoshiwa is also a, a famed, venerated mill over there. Anyways, um, the Kaihara is very smooth and just kind of like your typical sanferized denim. It's a slow fader. So even though I haven't worn them a whole lot, you can just look on the internet. Um, it's kind of hard to find pictures, but I found some. And so the thing with these Kaihara is not the white fades you know it's going to be more the royal blues the electric blues as they call them that is going to be the name of the game with these because they're going to fade really slow but they're going to reward you less with the the white from the yarns and more with those electric blues and then of course like anything eventually they'll lighten up but you don't really get them for the white fades this could be a really cool jean for somebody who is super super hard on their jeans because you know, they could have the lifestyle to present a challenge for this denim. Because otherwise, if you're just wearing these at the office, they're going to fade super, super slow. So for me, what I use them for is my nice dark blue pair of jeans. So I kind of just leave them in the closet until I have a nice occasion where I want a dark blue pair of jeans. You know, so it kind of defeats the purpose of it being raw denim, but I still think it's cool. So like there was a wedding that was a more casual wedding a couple weeks ago, and I wore this pair of jeans with a sport coat. The Yoshiwa denim is sanferized as well, but you wouldn't think it's sanferized because it has many of the characteristics of what we're used to seeing in unsanferized. For that reason, I would highly recommend the 17 ounce Yoshiwa denim from Freenote. It has tons of character, but it's not too much. It's, it's really balanced and stuff. And 17 ounces is like the perfect semi heavyweight heavyweight right so like if you go 21 ounces 25 ounces 32 ounces then it's like oh my gosh you're wearing like super heavy jeans which is great i i used to enjoy that with my unbranded brand jeans but it's not for everybody especially not for daily wear you go lower than that and you feel like you're in the midweight 17 ounce is like right on the cusp of midweight and heavyweight and so it's a nice way to kind of like dip your toes into the the deep end of heavyweight denim without like going all the way so for me, it's it's like sort of heavyweight, even though not really, and it stays practical uh, for everyday wear. So I'm really loving those. I really love the the cut, the pattern of the Freenote Belford. I'm bummed that they don't have a lot of, well, they don't really have any unsanferized at this point. They tried it in the past, but for the most part, they don't have unsanferized. That's a bummer for me. But the pattern itself, now that I've had the opportunity to try a decent amount of, 
you know, pretty well-known mid to high rise classic straight jeans. I think for my body shape, this is probably the best fit, the best cut. It's like just big enough, not too big, not too small, all the right proportions, not too much leg volume, leg width. Yeah, um, the seat of the pants is like, it's got enough room, but it's not too much. So for my particular body type, it's it's really good. So I think if you're someone that has like bigger, stronger thighs, or you have a bit of an ass on you or something like the Belford and all the other jeans from Freenode are probably not for you. Like if you're, yeah, like I said, muscular or just larger in the top block area, you're probably not going to be able to get anything in the free note that just like really, really feels good. Then again, like, I don't know, some guys are bigger from what I can see and seem to enjoy them. Like, uh, David Himmel, like he seems like he's way bigger than I am. Um, just like taller, more built and stuff. And he's got a little bit of weight on him and he swears by the free note Portola. So maybe I'm wrong about all this. But from what I'm seeing, like, if I was any bigger than I am, they'd be a little uncomfortable. But for the size that I am, so, yeah, like, just, like, average-sized people, uh, slender people, um, maybe you're, maybe you're like, muscular and toned, but you're, you, don't, you don't have, like, the, the heavy bodybuilder kind of build. Or, like, the, you know, running back, like, big muscular thighs or something like that, you know, um, these are going to be perfect. They're super nice. And the straight leg is not too big. It's not like a nine inch leg opening, which I love, but you know, it by modern standards is, is going to be a bit more acceptable and normal looking than like a nine inch leg on something. It's like an eight and a half, eight and a quarter inch leg. I have these both hemmed to like 29 or 30 inches and there it's enough to like roll the cuff up like once. And so, yeah, really, really cool. Uh, the pockets are super useful. The front pockets and the back pockets are, are, huge super great the one thing is the pockets in the front the pocket bags are a little shallow for my taste like you can get your hand in there but i kind of wish they were like a whole inch or inch and a half deeper i just like really deep pockets that you can put tons of stuff in you know the coin pocket as well is huge um, and the belt loops are huge so really wide belts like i'm pretty sure you could put like a two inch or two and a half inch belt in the belt loops um yeah the coin pocket is enough to to put like like you can put like a credit card in there it's it's <laughs> it's a big coin pocket um yeah and the quality control is really nice one thing on my yoshiwa pair is the rivet on the top of the right hand front pocket popped off after i washed them and it seemed to be not like poor craftsmanship i think it's just like every so often with things like this you'll get a rivet that's just a dud and you have no way of knowing that like it held solid and just fine all the way through quality control all the way through sale all the way through shipping all the way into the first wear and stuff and then i ran it through the washing machine and dried it and stuff and then when i was putting them on boom it popped off and so i think like it just had like bent or something or, or like it crimped really weird and there's no way you could have like discovered that um, unless you were like pulling on it, but like, I don't, I don't know what quality control process is like for jeans, but I would assume like you're checking everything out, but like it's a new product, right? You don't really want to be like yanking on everything and then selling it to people. So I think you could just chalk that up to like, Hey, it happens. And I've, I've talked to other guys online, like, you know, sometimes this happens with expensive jeans too. And I think it's probably more common with like, uh, you know, heavier weight denim, <clears throat> that part of the jean has like three layers or four layers of denim and cloth because you got the pocket bag, you got the waistband, you got the, you know, it's a seam. So there's probably a lot of tension there. So anyways, the fact that you had uh, a dud rivet at that point, you know, it's within reason. And like I said, yeah, uh, even more expensive brands and, and brands that you've heard of like 316 or whatever like this happens from time to time um so i i could have just sent it right back to them and they would have fixed it um i know they would have but i want to experiment because i've never experienced this before and so i was like you know what? Let, let's just let it ride 1872 style um 
yeah, I just want to see what happens. Like, it probably will hold up just fine. It probably will not fail at that point. If it starts to fail, then obviously I'll just take it in and get it fixed. Um, and that's all part of the journey. But for now, I'm like, I don't want, I kind of want to see what happens. Like, let's, let's check this out. So anyways, uh, yeah, really loving these jeans. Um, I think I've been settling on like go-to jeans, like staple jeans, foundational jeans versus experimental jeans, right? So I'll probably continue to be into special jeans, you know, like, oh, this special fabric or this special cut or this has this special design or whatever. They've got the like Momotoro gold label or whatever it's called jeans. Like that stuff is so cool. Like Naked and Famous has all these like crazy things they do. Samurai, Edwin, they they have all these like new things they're trying. Uh, Oni, Tanuki, Pure Blue Japan. They're doing all these crazy cool new things all the time. I think that's really fun. But as far as like go-to foundational jeans in the wardrobe, I'm starting to realize the ones that really work for me. Um, Naked and Famous True Guy could be that. I'm enjoying the pair I have right now. Um, as I said in my review on them, I think the cut might leave a little to be desired, but I have to try the next size down before I can really determine that. Uh, but the free notes, I feel like I've nailed it. Like, I love the fit. And especially with these slub ones, the Yoshiwa. I think if you're someone who is like uh, unsanforized only, I think you would be happy with this Yoshiwa. Like, it's the kind of denim where like it would take an experienced eye to see that it is sanforized. Like, at first glance, they look and feel and wear like an unsanforized pair. And then you start really looking closely, you're like, you know what, maybe these are sanforized. Right, so um, it's like the sand fries pair of jeans for guys who don't like sand fries, if that makes sense, and and they're soft enough to wear like, um, yeah, it's not going to be this like pain in the butt break in process or whatever. Um, they seem like they're going to be quick faders. I was told they were, but we'll see how that goes. And uh, yeah, they're they're really great. So yeah, don't have enough good things to say about these. I think they're really cool. You you already know I'm a fan of Freenote. Uh, most of their stuff is actually really, really good. I keep looking down at my jeans. That's what I'm looking at um, as I talk. So anyways, um, yeah, I'll let you know how these go. Um, let your jeans take you places more important than the jeans themselves. Talk to you next time.